Good day. I was asked by a colleague to demonstrate a few features of PIEC networking software that might help with the analysis of a food web. So uh, given the data, uh, the first thing that we did was translate the data into a .NET format um, for PIEC. Uh, the format starts with a, a definition of the vertices and uh, the count of the vertices. And then each vertice is uh, given a unique number and a label. And the numbers that you see over to the, uh, to the right of the screen are just a default layout for where to put those, put those nodes when you visualize the, the work. Um, you can see that each node uh, represents a species and um, the arcs represent uh, the flow of energy from one species to another as um, the energy moves from you know, one species to another in the food web. So um, to put this into perspective, uh, label number one represents bacteria, label number three represents zooplankton, and the first arc in the series documents the energy flowing from um, the bacteria to the zooplankton. So, uh, and you could trace out each one of the pieces of the relationship in the, in the format. So the goal is to read this into PIEC and then to perform some basic analysis uh, through visualization and some clustering techniques. So we start by just loading the file uh, this is on my desktop, so all things being equal, you can just pull in the file. And uh, when it reads in, it'll give you some basic information about how many lines were read in, how long it took, what, you know, where the location was, and, and so on. This report is pretty handy, and when you're getting to learn a new network, it might be useful to just get some general information about the network, which you can do... Um, by clicking network and info and you can just go to general. There are some more specific things that you could get as well, but um, for starters, that should be good. And so, um, you know, what it'll report to you is just some basic statistics about the network. So it'll give you the number of vertices, uh, the number of arcs, which are directed edges. Um, if there are any loops or uh, multiple lines between nodes, it would tell you at that point. And then it gives you different density measurements and an average degree. So if you're looking for just basic information about this um, network, you, you can get some there. And there's, there's some more info reports that might be worth checking out. So at this point, usually what I would want to do is just get a sense of what I'm dealing with and uh, draw the network. And uh, by default, it's going to sort of place, place them in circles. And we can just sort of take some different approaches. Energy approaches to layout will try to um, bring nodes that have a tighter relationship together, and those with a further relationship, they'll try to push them apart. So um, it's nice to be able to try one of these and transform it. And if you use three directions, you can actually um, spin the structure. Sometimes you can see some additional um, features as you move it around and sort of play with it. So, um, you know, initially looking through this, I mean, it's interesting and it's always fun to sort of do the visualization, but it's it's not really obvious what we're what we're looking at yet, and the structure isn't made particularly clear. This is where some of the additional analysis really helps. So. The first thing that you'd probably want to do is create a partition. And um, in this case, a degree partition is probably really helpful. And since we're dealing with um, directed arcs, we probably want to pick you know, input or output, I guess, um, depending on how you view it. I'm going to pick a degree input partition. And all this is going to do is create a new structure the same size as the network. 
and each node will get a value based on the number of incoming links. Okay, so um, whether this is the correct form of analysis uh, from the point of view of the food web, I'll leave to the biologists. But this allows us to get some interesting information and to start to structure the different levels in the food web in a way that might be a little easier to understand. So the input degree partition is what will allow you to redraw this network, not only with the network, but with that partition information. And you'll notice that when you use a partition, you get an additional option in the visualization. You can actually layer them. And in this case, layering them in the Y direction, all of a sudden you start to get a lot more structure here. Um, and you can see that you have uh, all of the species that essentially have zero input are, are at the top, right? So the thing, the, the creatures, the organisms that everybody else eats are sort of at the bottom. Um, if you wanted to, you could um, transform this to um, maybe just um, look a little bit more the way we might expect. So if you flip this 180 degrees, um, now we have something that looks uh, a, a bit more like a food web in the way that we, at least the way I'm used to looking at it. Um, we could always flip it back if this is inappropriate. But now we can really start to see the levels uh, in the food web and start to think about how that energy is flowing from one species to another. What we might do at this point is we might decide, well, for the eight, for the help of visualization, we, we may want to include the counts of the different um, species that each consumes. So in this case, uh, we can always go back and um, create a vector. So we can um, create a vector uh, based on centrality, degree centrality, and input. So we're going to do the same calculation that we did with the partition, but instead of, of using it as a partition, we're going to use it as a vector of numbers. And this gives us some additional uh, features in the visualization that we can use. Uh, there's another way I could have done that. I could have just copied the partition to a vector, but it's, it's nice to know how you can do all these different things. And, um, you know, you notice these are the same numbers. Uh, they're just going to be treated as numbers instead of labels, and that's really useful to us. Because if we decide to draw it, we can draw it with the first partition and the first vector. And now you see what it does. It includes the number, so we now know uh, how many species contribute energy to these species at the top. Uh, but it also resizes the nodes based on their vector values for the input degree. So you can see that, um, you know, because algae and you know, bacteria do not consume anything in this food web, um, or maybe any food web, uh, you can see they have zero, um, you know, basically dots on the screen. And as, as their input degree increases, uh, you get the species that um, basically get the energy from the most other species at the top. So um, with networks, partitions, and vectors, you can do some uh, pretty nice things uh, related to how, to how to analyze these and produce some, some useful visualizations. Once you get this far, you might decide that you want to look at one particular part of the uh, food web. So you may decide that you want to extract some of these some of these um, groups of species into a, a separate network. You can do that with the operations menu. So if you generally to, to pull out a cluster, you need a network and a partition. So and you want to extract so we are going to extract, and I usually use the subnetworks induced by each selected cluster separately. But if you wanted to, you could extract the clusters together in, in one network. But I'm, I'm just going to do them separately. And um, 
I'm going to just pick a number here. I don't know. Um, you know, we'll pick five. And what it should do, if I've made a good choice, I didn't make a good choice, but um, what it should do is it should pull out all of the nodes that have, have a degree of five. In this case, there appears to be only one, so that's not really a great choice. We're going to take a stab and this time uh, take a look at what we're doing and pick one that might just be actually interesting. Um, so maybe three, right? Um, we'll pull out that one and take a look at what we, we see any new structure in there. So we go to operations, network and partition. Uh, let's extract these out and show me um, partition three. And take a little time to calculate maybe. And there we go, we actually get nine. So you'll see it'll produce uh, a new network of nine nodes. It will also produce um, a partition that you can use. And now we can just draw that new network. And let's just lay it out and see what we look at, see what we get. Okay, so um, yeah, you, there's some structure here. Uh, there are lots of these loose species as well. Um, so, you, you know, again, this, you have to decide if this is meaningful to you as a, as a scientist, but um, this is how you can pull out different subsets from this network. I think the last thing that we'll, we'll probably do is just show how you can uh, use some of the algorithms to find uh, different clusters based on the pattern of arcs between the nodes. So you can create a partition, and in the past we used degree, but... Um, we can also do community detection. And um, the Louvain method basically is a way to identify highly modular areas in the network. So a modular area of the network is a place where the links within a group of nodes is much, much higher than the number of links outside of that node, right? So so it's a highly cohesive community inside this network that you're looking at. Um, I'll just sort of do it with some basic features and see what we get. Uh, so if we you know, sort of do this, you can see it found three different communities. And if we want to, we can um, visualize these different communities. And now, of course, um, let's sort of energize it and see what, what we get. So. If you, based on the community detection, what it's finding based on the settings that we had is it's finding three major groups in this data that says, you know, this module is more highly connected inside of the module than it is outside the module. So these are, are reasonable clusters based on the algorithm that's used. And then, of course, just like we've previously done, we could extract per certain parts of these clusters and study them more intensely. And it may be that, you know, these clusters are related somehow in an important way um, based on the biology. So uh, I hope that that was a, a useful summary and um, I'm open to questions or, or help of any kind. So uh, thanks for listening.